In this tutorial, we're going to cover and learn how to build a character in 3D. Uh, this is going to be a multi-part tutorial, so we're going to do three. Uh, I'm going to do three different tutorials on how to model the character. The first one will be on the head. The second one will be on the rest of the body, and the third one will be all the extra details, the armor, the gloves, the boots, and all that stuff. So it'll be a three-step, uh, three-part tutorial, um, and then. In the end, we're going to texture them, color them uh, in Photoshop, and then send them over or animate them and put them in the game engine so we can run around with the character and control how he moves around. So it'll be a, a long process of building a character from nothing all the way to uh, interacting with them in the game engine. And we're going to be, use Maya f be using Maya for the modeling, and we're going to be using Unity for the game engine, and we'll use Photoshop for the texturing aspect, and I'll also mention how to use ZBrush. Uh, I haven't sculpted the... Uh, wrinkles in his clothes and the uh, um, whatever other wrinkles and folds in his pants. I'm going to sculpt that in ZBrush, so we'll cover that part later. Um, so uh, this most this tutorial is going to be pretty quick. I'm, uh, I spent about, let's say, 16 hours or so, r roughly, on building the character. I'm not going to spend that long making this tutorial, so I'm going to run through more or less the concepts and the methods of how to get to the character. So it'll save you the time of uh, having to go through and watch me click every vertice because realistically we're going to be having to click every vertice to create the character. Um, Alright, so in this first video we're going to focus on just making the head. Uh, so to start with, let's turn off the character and we need an image plane now. Uh, image planes are uh, images that we import into the 3D program so that when we're building the character, as seen here, we can look at how he's supposed to look based on the concept art that we've drawn and we can model them from the side view, from the front view, and get our proportions. Alright, so in order to bring in image planes, let's turn these off. Uh, so bringing in image planes, we need pre-made drawings. So I've already made some drawings here. I have uh, the original character sketch right here, and then I decided to uh, put his arms out a little bit more just so for ease of modeling and rigging, so this way they're not going to be so close to um, the side of them. Some do the T pose when they model, they put the arms straight out. This is more of the relaxed pose when the arms a little bit downwards. Um, this is probably a little too close to the side, but that can work also. Um, and then the, the side view also. I didn't draw the arm here, just like so you see the rest of the details, but you could draw the arm. Either way, the heights are about the same. So his head height right here is going to be the same height here, and the feet are going to be the same height here. So if you notice where the mouse is, he's staying the same height. So the drawings are the same size, proportional to each other. So the belt is about right here on the same length. Uh, upper arms are about right here. So everything matches in the drawings. So when we import this, we can draw off, we can model off the drawings. Uh, so to import these drawings in here now, uh, we open Maya, and uh, if you go to View right here, we can Im import an image plane. So I'm going to go import image, and you want to import the image plane uh, on the respective viewports. If I were to import it now on a 3D viewport, it would get stuck in the back of the 3D screen, and even though I spin the camera around, it wouldn't move on the back image. So I want to import image planes into the uh, respective viewports. So this being the front viewport, it says down here front, uh, maximize that, and the spacebar clicking it will uh, jump out of viewports, or over here on the left side, it gives you that option. So back to view, import image plane, um, import image, and then I pick the image I want. Uh, this would be uh, character front number two. Uh, so import that in there, and it should drop the image in our screen. Um, There it is. Uh, looks like I imported a little bit, a uh, little bit low. Um, all right, so we've got the image in here, and then we're going to import one more image. I'm going to put this in the side view, so spacebar to maximize that. Uh, view image plane, import image, and same thing. I pop the side view in here, it looks like it's probably yep, uh, a little far zoomed out on there. Uh, so we have our image planes in here, so in 3D space you can see that we've imported the two different images. Uh, while they're both in here, I'm going to select both of them so that they uh, both get turned or turn green. So I can move them up a little bit higher. Um, and you can kind of oops, uh, size it however you want to put it. 
Uh, so I'm going to make this a little bit larger, so R for scale, and then I can make them larger so he fits more of the grid, so I have, uh, I guess, a little more space to work with. And then I'll go W for move, and put his feet uh, pretty much right on the edge of the grid. So not so much the edge of the paper, but the, the feet of the drawing are right on the grid line. Uh, once I'm happy with that result, I can slide, um, let's slide, take the one, click the, the outer edge, see it's purple. If I click the purple line, it turns green. Otherwise, you can't just click the drawing. So click the edge of it, and I can slide the edge over this way. And I can slide uh, this one over that way. And that should work right there. Um, let's pull back into this viewport. Uh, we also want to center the character. So if you notice these uh, black lines, like this one right here, this is the center, the zero, zero origin point, and that's where the drawing popped in because it centers the drawing, but the drawing I didn't draw, the character centered in the paper space. So I'm going to slide the drawing further over until it centers as best it can down the center of him. I wasn't super accurate on the, uh, I guess, drawing it proportional, so you can see that one foot's a little further to the side than this one is, and the head's a little more to the left than it is on this side on the right. But it still matches the majority of the center of his body. So assuming you're not going to draw perfectly symmetrical, try and average it as best you can. Uh, so let's jump back and do the same thing for this one. So I'll grab this guy and I'll center him uh, as best I can on the grid line. So on that black line right there and that pretty much sets up our drawings. Uh, so now we can start modeling our character and I've already done this on the image planes here so you can see that they're, um, it's pretty much the exact same copy of what, we, what we've just done. Uh, all right, and I put these on their own layer. By creating a layer, it gives me the option to turn them off and on. So if I were to select both of these, uh, I can go and, looks like, there we go. Yeah, they're both selected, it just doesn't look green. Uh, so I select that, and I can click this option right here, which is create a new layer with the already selected objects. And if I click that, it looks like it made layer two, and I can turn layer two off and on. So I have these on their own layer. But I also want to make it so that I can't accidentally click these uh, by clicking them and then somehow being able to move them. So I don't want to be able to move these anymore. So I'm going to take this layer and click once for template and click a second time for reference. So now there's no way to click these. They're locked in the background until I click it again to uh, make it clickable and now I can manipulate it. So I'm going to reference these layers or this layer and just have it for you. So now I can start building on it. Um, since I've already pre-done this, I'm going to use the original image planes right here. Um, so with the image planes now, I need to start creating the head shape. And for the head, um, there's a, I guess let's, I'll, hmm. all right, so I'll show you, uh, I'm going to do the head in like three steps, I guess, three different processes, whichever method you prefer easier. Uh, so I turn the head layer on, and you can see here, I've already pre-made the head and all the different steps that go into making the head. So let's unreference that layer. And let me turn off the image planes. All right, so let's zoom in here. Uh, close out that. And we can see here that we have um, the head being built in a particular order, kind of step by step. So at this point, if you wanted to pause the video and just build all these like a Lego uh, set, you just look at what's different between the two. Okay, this step to here, this step to here, and you just kind of figure out where to cut your own lines and sculpt this, then go for that. Uh, just pause the video and just uh, read off of the um, different steps. Um, the next thing, uh, the second part is I'll just explain the differences between each step, and the third part I'll actually go through and start and model the whole thing for you. So whichever method you prefer, whether it's just looking at this photo of the uh, picture right now, or um, watching me explain step by step how everything is put together, or actually working through the process. Uh, and the time code in the bottom of the um, video in the description, you can click to each different section depending on which one you want to go through. Um, so you ch keep checking the time code and you can see, you can jump to different parts of this video. All right, so let's, uh, let's start with this. So we have a box right here, and this will probably take five minutes to explain, and then I'll run through actually how to do it. So I created a box, and then I divided it uh, with a line down the middle, and then from there, I duplicated it, or not duplicated it, I smoothed it first, and then I duplicated it, cut the other half off, so I have one side here and one side there. What this allows me to do is that I can take uh, these sides, and it's symmetrical now. Whatever I do to one side affects the other side. 
so I don't have to do so much work to everything now. Uh, let me put some lines on here, shading, wireframe unshaded. This will put the blue lines on there so I don't have to keep clicking everything. All right, uh, so I have this here and I have um, the shapes. Uh, so what this was is going to the smooth option up here, mesh uh, smooth, uh, there it is. Smooth, so you click the box itself and you smooth it and it smooths everything. Uh, once that's smooth, you get this basic shape and you have you only have to worry about one side. Um, and that was with duplicate special, edit duplicate special, and you can just click on this and set it to minus y or minus one in the x direction because that's the x uh, and make it an instance and so whatever you change on one will affect the other. So once you do that, these get pulled down a little bit here and you want to make sure this line basically corresponds to the character's eye line. Uh, then we're going to take the whole bottom set of faces, the uh, group of four of these, extrude them down and create this shape. Uh, and then we're going to go over here and kind of um, take this whole line right here that goes around the back and we're going to delete that whole line out of there. And then we're going to take the um, this part and kind of round it off to create more of the neckline and move this vertice uh, over to that corner and this one over there so it takes out that whole line as well. Alright, then the next step is once we have the neck all worked out, we're going to do the eye line and we're going to uh, pop in two more loops up on the top and push that, the eyes in and then we're going to kind of mark out where these are going to go for the mouth and then we're going to cut the side lines into the side of the mouth so we have more of the um, facial structure getting put in there and then the next step is we're going to um, create a hole so you can see the mouth is just a line right now and then we're going to punch a hole in the mouth so he starts to get lips where, it, where his mouth could open but there's a hole now in there. Uh, then we're going to jump over here and we're going to um, punch out the uh, eye line so we're going to have the eye sockets in there now and then once we do that we're going to take the face delete the face out of there so we have a hole in the face now over for the both eyes and we're going to cut some more lines so there was no line here but we put a line right there and the same thing here um, we're going to add a line to the corner right there a line to the corner right here and one more line to cut off the nose area and then over here you can see there's a big gap right or a lot of empty space we want to try and keep everything squares so I'm going to cut another line into here which cuts automatically to the mouth using the um, insert edge loop it automatically just puts all those lines in there for you uh, so it kind of squares it out a little more and then we're going to go through and cut another line from here all the way down to the lips area and so that'll put the um, a little more definition into the nose area um, and yeah so uh, then we're going to go to uh, adding another line so we're, we already added this line in from up top here but now we're going to cut another line in from right around the eye area and cut that into about here at the edge corner of the nose. It looks pretty similar to this one, but there's actually an extra line in there. So we're going to cut that line in there from here, and then we're going to cut it um, across here and down around there. So it creates more of a loop around the lips. Uh, once that part's uh, cut in there, uh, we're going to go, we need to start modifying these vertices. So you can see here it's kind of a little square shape right now. We need to start moving vertice for vertice. Every one of these things have to move to some point until they're in the correct uh, position. So it looks a lot more circular, which is edge loop so the character can squash and stretch his mouth more accurately versus a bunch of out of place uh, vertices. Uh, so once we've rearranged that and put these in more or less uh, a better order. We're going to add one more line down here right down the edge of the chin because there's one missing right there. And that kind of squares everything out a little bit more. Uh, then we're going to add some more rings or loops around the lips area so we can create uh, more defined lips. And then we're going to go insert some eyes. Uh, this way we can start to uh, set the eye shape to fitting a little better. And we're going to add another edge loop in there to allow the eyes to have more squash and stretch when he, the character blinks. And then uh, at this point, we're going to go and start um, adding in some more edge loops to uh, refine everything. So you can see here is a gap right here. So this line will come up through here. We're going to take another one across the head right here. So it's going to come over there. And then another one's missing right here. So we're going to put one right there. And it kind of squares out a lot of the pieces. Uh, and then there's one more um, where there's two lines right here. I slid the one line further to the right and dropped a new one in there. But you could also slide it to the left and drop one in there. 
And then one last one, I put one up top here for the nose area. I slid this one down a little bit and then slid a new one up there. Uh, so that put the lines in there. It makes it a little more squarish on all the shapes. Up uh, the side of the head still needs some more work. It has uh, a lot of empty areas. Uh, so over here we, um, we add in some more uh, lines. So I went down from the top downwards under the chin to get another line and another line on this side. Uh, so that should be the difference between these is that, yep, there was a line here and a line there that was added. And I also added another line around the edge of the uh, neckline to fill that in. And again, once you add your lines, you have to keep pushing and pulling all these vertices to kind of round everything out a little more accurately. Uh, then after that, I took this whole section of uh, four squares, extruded it inwards, then extruded it outwards to create the ear shape. And then I pushed the ear, or extruded in some more and pushed it back again to get the ear shape. Um, and then again, pushed it, uh, pushed the bottom section in a little bit more and I pushed it in again. So you can see I can push the bottom section in and then push this last square in a little more and pull out that little square to give some more uh, definition to the ear shape. And then playing with this some more kind of pushing and pulling and extruding. Um, I'm not going to go into super detail on how to get the ear. That could take another hour or two in just getting an accurate ear. But you can see it starts to get relatively close. And if I smooth the character by pressing 3 in the keyboard, it smooths out the ear shape pretty well, even though it looks like it's um, kind of blocky right now. And then afterwards, uh, once all this, that part of the character shaping was done, I then went into and deleted the other half or hid the other half of them. Uh, this way I can pull the mouth inward. So when I first made the mouth, I only left it a blank. Um, it just came close, but now I'm going to pull it outwards. And the reason I do this last rather than earlier is because when I'm moving all the lip points, I don't want to accidentally grab one of the points back here. So I save that for the end. And then once I do that, um, go over here, fill the back of it in there, and insert a tongue inside there, which is basically just a, a square set in place. And when that's all said and done, we have the character right here. Let's fit that on the camera screen. All right. And if I turn off the shading, so turn off wireframe, we can see that we have a character um, roughly in a basic shape. So depending on what you're aiming for, what style, you can start changing the lines and pulling these up and down and moving them all around to create different expressions on your character, different, let's say an older person, maybe a female, or a child, uh, just moving and rearranging the points is all you would need to do is get different um, facial appearances. But as long as you have the same pattern, we have the loops around the, the mouth and then the kind of keeping square shapes for most of the character, that's all you would need. You can go into a lot more detail to make the ear a little more um, interesting. Uh, and then the line coming down the middle is because there's two different halves. Once the two halves are merged together, it automatically smooth out that line. So we're not worried about that at the moment. So, uh, in review, that basically covers how to create the character, so, or the head of the character. Um, if you are cool with understanding the, um, what buttons do what to get those results, then great, uh, just go for it. Um, but now I'm going to cover how to go through and click and manually create all this stuff starting with a brand new one. Uh, this could take a little while, so the rest of the video is going to be basically me building this. I'm not going to do it to the same level of super detailedness because that could take a couple hours maybe about four hours or so depending on how precise and how much expression you want to put in the character uh, so i'm not going to do that but i'll run through the basic method and steps um, and just not worry about pushing and pulling every vertice so you guys can do that on your own all right so let's go back to here turn on our image plane so we can see what we're at all right so we're going to go through all those steps right now all right, so to create the character, I'm going to make a box. So up here under the Polygon tab, I'm going to click on the box. And I'm going to draw the box on the grid and pull it up. So I could do that, um, and I can rearrange it, or I could delete that and try it again. I could uh, jump into the front view and then build the box. This way I know that it's the same shape as the head. So I'm going to try and roughly uh, get the same shape. So do that once and it says now drag to set the up height. Um, I can kind of guess or I can jump out and click into the side view where I can pull it out forwards 
and that gives me the front height. Uh, and that's more or less there. I press R on the keyboard and I can start scaling it and make it a little bit longer. W, and then I can move the character or the square to better match the character. So I'm trying to get a, a rough proportion of the character's head. And then jump back to the front view. So spacebar, clicking it will automatically jump you between the viewports. Um, looks like his head is probably about right. I could probably make it a little bit taller. Pull it up there. And that's probably close enough to the character's head shape. All right, so jump out of there, back to perspective mode. And we now have the uh, F on the keyboard when you're selected on something will fit. Because you can see how my camera is like not spinning around the box. It's just spinning anywhere. F will zoom into here and now it'll spin around the box. So that's another handy shortcut on the keyboard. Um, all right, so once we have the um, box fitted on the screen, uh, we're gonna go to, um, we're gonna center the box. So let's jump back out here and notice how, oops, uh, not what I meant to do. Uh, let's go back to, All right, click, click that button. There we go. So uh, we're going to go to mm, oh yeah, centering the box. So uh, if you notice when I'm selected on the box, it um, it may not be perfectly centered. It looks like it's pretty centered, but if I want to make sure it's super centered, uh, you can see here it's 0 .006. Uh, I can hold X on the keyboard and then click this, and it'll automatically pop it to the grid line. So it's grid snapping by holding X and moving. By doing that, it zeroed it out. So I could have just manually typed zero in there as well. So we know that the center of the head is perfectly on the grid line. Maybe not on the drawing, but it's perfectly on the grid. So we can snap vertices and make sure everything is perfectly symmetrical. All right, so we have this here. The box is centered. And now we're going to add some subdivisions. So I'm going to go to the inputs right here. Click on PolyQ15 that got created. And I'm going to set the, um, the width to 2. By doing that, it puts a line right down the middle. I can keep adding more of these if I wanted to, but I don't really need to add any more. Oops. Uh, so I can keep adding lots of lines, but the fewer polygons you work with while modeling, the easier it is. If you have too many polygons, it's just too many vertices to move, and it's just, yeah, too much work. So we're just going to use as few as we can possibly use. Uh, so we're, by doing the subdivision width, we split the head down in half, and now I can go to mesh smooth uh, and you can check the settings right here um, one is all we need for this you could go edit reset settings just to make sure everything is reset and then apply and it smooths out the head it basically divided everything in half um, and rounded the head for us so once we're there we're going to go to face mode uh, so right clicking on the, the mouse and then dragging down while holding the right click button uh, you can pick the different modes. So we face, edge, vertex, and object mode are going to be the ones we're going to use the most. Um, we shouldn't need the other ones. So face mode means that if I drag around here, it'll select just these faces. And um, at the moment, it looks like I have the camera set to only clicking what's visibly on the camera. And that would be over here if I click the mouse or double click that. It's camera-based selection at the moment, so it's only selecting what the camera sees, which can be helpful if I grab the whole front. It basically leaves the back untouched because it wasn't seen by the camera. If I uncheck this, uh, and then I grab here, it'll grab right through the entire object to grab everything I've selected. So I'll take all that, and again, to get to this camera-based selection, it's just uh, double-clicking on the arrow here. You can close it with X, double-click on the arrow, and it pops that back out. Alright, so I'm going to press delete on the keyboard once they're selected, and it deletes out the other half of his head. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because if I change one side, it doesn't change the other side. And I want to be able to change both sides at the same time so I can see it's symmetrical. So right click and go back to object mode now. So we have the half of his head right here. And then we're going to go over to edit, duplicate special, and click the little settings box. and here we're going to make sure it's instance. Copy just means that it's going to make a copy and we're back to what we had before. Instance means that whatever I change on one side will change the other side. I have to do half the work, which is great. Uh, scale is the one we want to use also. Uh, depending on which viewport you built this on, if you notice right here, the X is going left and right, the Y is going up and down, and the blue Z you can't really see is coming towards us and away from us. So when I want to mirror this or scale it, if I scale it on the negative one X, it'll go 
to the negative direction. Positive x will go positive, and I don't need to go up and down. So for some reason they don't name these things, but this would be x, y, and z, um, I think. Or at least the first one is x, I'm sure. So I press plot, apply with the negative 1 scale right here, and it pops another image or a duplicate right there, and I can close this. So now if I go here, right click, go to vertex mode, grab these vertices and move, you can see it scales both sides, which is exactly what we want. Uh, so once we have that done, we go back, actually I'm going to stay in uh, this mode. So at this point we can start creating how we want the face to look. Um, and I'm not going to go super detailed into this, but uh, basically you want to go to here and kind of pull your vertices. So this will be like the, um, the chin line, I guess. Over here we're going to pull this down so this kind of centers in the eye line. So this middle part is the middle of the eyes. Uh, I could try and pull this down a little further to kind of balance that out. Maybe pull this one down. Um, probably pull these inwards. Uh, maybe pull this one in some more. And when I'm doing this, I'm not grabbing um, just the one and pulling because you can see it leaves another one sitting underneath there. Uh, the reason is because they're perfectly overlapping from the front view, so we can't see. Uh, if I jump out to perspective, you can see that it, it only grabbed the one in the front by just clicking it once. It just grabs one. But if you drag the mouse over top of the rectangle, you'll grab straight through and grab everything that's stacked on top of each other. So that's why you want to use the drag across. So that moves this one in, and I can drag across, grab this one, and more or less kind of sculpt the head to uh, the dimension that we have here. So the top of the head, probably pull this one up a little more. Uh, so we have the curvature of the head coming around. Uh, maybe move the chin in a little more, maybe up a little. Kind of match whatever shape you want. And then jump back to perspective mode. And we're going to need to pull the back in. We can do this in this mode as well. Uh, pull this in here. Pull this up here, and I'm not going to be super accurate, this will take a, a while to build all this out. Uh, but you can see here that more or less it's close enough to the right shape. So once you're happy with the shape, and it looks pretty accurate to you, again, uh, this could take a, a lot of finesse and detail to get this super accurate, and I'm not going to spend the time to get it super accurate but that's probably good enough. All right, um, and then let's pull this one out as well so it creates more of the neckline. All right, so we have this here. Uh, the next step is to go and create the, uh, the neck. So I'm gonna go to face mode and grab this one and this one. Um, and so what we're gonna be creating here is the neck being pulled down. So if I click on this one, you can see I grabbed uh, the four of these right here and then pulled them inwards and then downwards. So jumping back over to here, again F on the keyboard is fit, jump zooms into it. Uh, looks like these vertices also should come down a little more to kind of center it. Uh, and then face mode, grab this one, this one, this one, this one. So I have all four of these selected. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm not um, gonna press uh, extrude button right here. This is the extrude, so I click on this one and it gives us the extrude options. Uh, we have a couple options here. We have the moving option, these arrows, the boxes right here are your scale, and this ring around here is your rotate. So I'm gonna click on the green box just once, and that activ or activates scale, but I'm gonna click and drag the green box to scale it inwards, and then the red one to scale it uh, this direction as well. And then I can move, uh, pressing W on the keyboard, I can switch out to the move and slide that inwards. Um, I can also click on R for rotate and rotate that and W, move it down. So it kind of creates the neck or the, um, yeah, the neck area. Uh, and then we're going to do this uh, one more time, extrude again. And instead of pulling downwards, I'm going to click this little circle that's kind of in the corner. By clicking on that, it switches the orientation of the extrude. So now I can start extruding downwards. Otherwise, clicking it will want to pull it out in every direction, which is that way, but uh, clicking this blue one and then pulling straight down gives us the option of a global worldview versus a local pulling everything. All right, so that makes um, that. Um, right click, go to vertex mode, select all of these, uh, R for scale, and if I scale this green square down to the yellow square, it flattens out the neckline so he has a nice uh, 
flat under area for the neck. Um, also of note, see the line down the middle? When we extruded it, it automatically put a face in the middle. And we don't want the face in the middle. So if we go inside of his head and zoom in, you can see that it created uh, an extra face right in the middle of his neck. And we don't want a face in the middle of his neck. It's not going to smooth very well. So I'm going to right click and go to face mode. Click on the face, delete, delete. Click on this one, delete, and delete. So it deleted out that interior amount of faces, so now this neck is hollow. All right, and that'll fix up the, uh, the error of the problem right here. So I can right click, go to vertex mode, and instead of trying to uh, figure out where exactly these two start and stop, because you want this to be pretty perfect so it um, symmetrically mirrors, I'm gonna hold the X on the keyboard and then move it, and it automatically snaps. So you can see it's snapping to grid points, and since we put this centered on the grid, it'll snap right to that point. Uh, sometimes, if you're aimed, like let's say up this direction and you hold the X, it may not pop. So just orient your camera sometimes until you can see the grid and then it knows where the grid is. Otherwise, if you're angled outwards, it doesn't always know where the grid is when you're grid snapping. Uh, so again, the same on this side. So oh, grab this one, uh, hold the X on the keyboard and snap it. And the last one, hold X and snap it. So now we have the neck uh, assembled. I'm gonna go to edge mode. And by grabbing edge mode, I can start pulling these out and centering them a little better. Um, oops, back to edge mode. I grab this one, pull this inwards, kind of round out the neck a little more. Uh, this one, push this in. And this one, pull this out a little. All right, and so now we have this right here, which is uh, the neck coming down, but it's still kind of centered. Uh, in the middle of his head, people don't usually have a neck centered in the middle of the head. It's, it kind of blends in with the back end. Uh, so in order to get rid of that, we're going to go to, while we're in edge mode, we can click this edge, and we want to hold shift and grab the next edge, and the next one, and the next one. So we want to take all of these edges by holding shift on the keyboard. It allows us to select multiple in the selection, and we want to delete these edges. You can go up to edit mesh and find the delete edge, um, oops, the delete edge option, which is right about here, delete edge. Um, a shortcut for this, if you don't want to use uh, that, is control delete, and that'll delete the edge. And uh, one more option, if you don't want to do that, uh, you can hold the control key on the keyboard, uh, right click on the mouse, I mean, hold shift on the keyboard, right click on the mouse, and you get delete edge. Really quick and easy, you don't even have to move the mouse away. So they kind of use that option a lot. Holding shift and holding right click will bring up new menus whereas holding right click will give you these, holding shift right click is these, and holding control right click is these. So you have multiple different options immediately right wherever you're looking at. So hold shift, delete the edge, takes out those edges, so now we can rearrange them more. And the last thing, I wanna move these vertices and match these onto uh, this one. Um, now, match these vertices onto this one. Uh, at the moment we have a five-sided object, so one, two, three, four, five sides. We don't want five sides as considered an engon. We want four sides for everything. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Everything has four sides and nice and even. So we want to take this vertice and pop it here. So in order to do that, I'm going to hold the um, shift key, right click, and merge vertices, and then click on the merge vertex tool. It's a shortcut to get to there. Otherwise, you can pull it up through here under the uh, merge vertex tool. Um, then in order, the way for merge vertex tool works is that you click and hold on the vertex you want to send somewhere and drag it to the vertex you want to move it to. So click the first one, hold it, drag it, and it pops right there. Um, click the next one, click, drag, and it'll pop right there. And so now basically merge our vertices here. I can go back to regular vertex mode and press W on the keyboard, and I can start moving these points around. And let's say I move them this way. And that should be good right there. And I can keep fine tuning everything to make it a little more accurate, kind of pull these up a little more. Maybe even uh, take these and pull these out a little more to give the neck a little more of a, I guess a neckline. Maybe, I'll leave that up there. All right, so you can see we have um, the neck right here. I could pull these in if, some more if I wanted to. Uh, and you can play around trying to make that accurate to your photo. Um, so that creates the next stage. Uh, the next step is we want to go and put the, um, the eyes in here and so to put the eyes in here we need to mark out where the eyes are going to go so let's go back to this one oops uh, 
object mode fit. So um, putting out the eye line in here, we're going to go with the um, uh, interactive split tool. This tool is kind of iffy. Sometimes it works, sometimes it has issues. Maya 2015 has this uh, fixed up a little bit better, I think. Um, and they also have a new option um, and other stuff that works pretty well. But this is 2014, so I'll try and make do with it. So I click on this one. And what I want to do is I want to start putting some lines in here. So I'm going to cut where the eye lines are going to go. You can either do this in the front viewport, uh, like right here, kind of figuring out where your eyes are going to be. So if I hover over top here, you can see it's the orange dot is moving in the front viewport down here. So I know where it's lining up to. So I'm going to click here, up to here, and then down to about there. And there's the eye. So once I'm done, I press enter on the keyboard and it confirms it. So the next step, click it again. Uh, we're going to go put a line here to here. Actually, it didn't work. Um, escape will cancel. Nope. Uh, w to go to the move, then Control Z to get that back out of there. All right. So try that again. It didn't quite work. All right. Click it. Click it. Click it. And then press Enter to confirm. All right. And that puts the eye line in there. So we have the eyes uh, basically cut out. Um, the next step I want to go through is... Uh, uh, cutting um, another line downwards. So if I click from here down to here, down to here, that kind of rounds off the face. Uh, this may or may not work. Uh, you can see here it pops it in the wrong place. Uh, again, my 2014 has issues with why that doesn't work. 2015, I think, resolves that. Um, so Control Z to undo that. Uh, to better fix this, I can press Control Z and take out the eye lines right there and do reverse order. So start with this one down to here, down to here, enter. That one goes in nicely now. Uh, and then I can start over with the eyes. So here to here to here, enter, and then repeat. About there to there to there, enter. So for some reason, Maya has issues with why that tool doesn't work the first time we used it. We just had to reverse the order. It gets tricky. Um, Anyway, so we have that uh, cut out now. So the next step is we want to push the eye line in. So let's go to edge mode. Uh, take this edge and push this straight back. And then we'll take this vertice as well. Oops, uh, vertex mode. Uh, push this one back as well. And maybe push this one back a little more. So we can kind of keep somewhat of a squarish shape looking here. Uh, and this we could probably pull up and forward a little more. So it's partially squarish. We're going to be adding more lines in here as we go. Um, so you can see here's where the eye line is going to go. I can kind of center that a little better if I want to. And again, playing with all these different polygons and vertices to get the shape I want. Checking here, we can see that it has a large shape for the eyes, more than we need, but it's, that's, it's the eye socket area, not the eye itself. Um, so once we have the eye line cut in there, the next part is to cut in the, um, the mouth line. So we're going to go click on the same button again, and we're going to go cut a line in from, let's say, I guess there to there, and then press enter on the keyboard, uh, and then we'll do it again. Uh, the shortcut is G. G will automatically repeat your last command, so G. I can then pop a new one from here to, let's say, here, and then G again. Um, I'll pop a line from here over to there, enter, and then go to vertex mode and try and pull this one in. Uh, another, I guess it'll work, just click on this one, pull it down, and the last thing is to put cut a line down to there. So cut from here down to here, and again, 2014 probably won't like that. Oh, but it worked that time, cool. Uh, again, if not, just keep clicking until that works, until you find a way, if it pops all different directions, it'll probably have more before the end of the tutorial. All right, so we have that lined up there, and we have the mouth area. Uh, so the next step is to cut some lines backwards. So I want to go from center here all the way to this point up here, and there's a pretty good chance it won't work. Enter. Yep, doesn't work. Uh, Maya sometimes has issues, so Control Z that. Let's try a different angle. Let's try from here over to this one. And that one worked, awesome. So click this again, and try from here over to there again, and it doesn't work. All right, Control Z that. Let's try from here 
over to this dot. It's not the where I wanted to go, but try it anyway. And it doesn't work again. So as you can see here, Maya has some issues with it. I'm gonna try from here to here. And that doesn't work at all. Uh, this does get really annoying trying to get this to work. So uh, let's try it again. I'll just leave that line in there, down to there. Okay, I got a line, awesome. Still not where I wanted to go, so let's keep trying this again. I'm gonna try from here to here again. And finally it works, awesome. So let's go to edge mode and let's get rid of these extra edges. So I'm gonna click this one and this one and then hold, uh, hold shift, right click, and then delete edge. Boom, wipes that out. Awesome, so now it's working where I wanted to go. We had to go through a lot of extra effort to get that to work. My is very tricky with that. Uh, let's go to vertex mode, make sure there's no extra vertices sitting anywhere. Nope. All right. So we've cut in the, uh, the mouth line, so let's start rearranging these points. And now I can try and, you notice how the coordinate system isn't exactly flush with his face. If I hold the W key on the keyboard and then click with the left mouse button and hold, I can have a few options of how I can change the orientation. Right now set to world mode, if I set it to normal average, see the orientation popped it, it changed it to being flush with his face now. So I can slide it across his face um, rather than uh, going back to here, going to world mode, and you can see it reorients it. In some cases it's a little more drastic, um, but if, if I take the blue I can slide it downwards, uh, this one I can slide it upwards, and kind of position where, oops, uh, vertex mode, position where this is going to go. Alright, and that kind of preps up the mouth area where everything's going to get cut in. Let's go back to object mode, uh, swap out to here, and we can see here that the mouth isn't quite centered, so vertice, grab everything, slide that down, so just make sure the line that you want, uh, the mouth line, is in place. I'm going to take this and slide this inwards some more. So this outer ring is not necessarily the lips, it's just starting the mouth formation, so that's fine. All right, so that's pretty much everything we need to put in place. Uh, so next up, we're gonna go and clean up or um, punch a hole in the mouth area. So let's go to edge, grab the edge, and we're gonna go to edit mesh and bevel. Click on the bevel settings. Uh, right now I have 0.5 for the settings, press apply, and it makes a giant hole for the mouth. It's probably more than I need, so I'm gonna click here, control Z it, and then change this to 0.25 press apply, and you can see it makes a smaller mouth area. Um, that's probably fine enough. So I'm gonna close that out. I uh, go to vertex mode, and I can scale these closer if I want, pressing R and squishing it in. Go to face mode and delete out uh, the center face, delete, and that little extra one right there, delete. And by doing that, uh, we now have a hole for his mouth. So when he opens his mouth, they'll stretch open and stretch closed, uh, but we can leave a little bit of a gap there for now. Uh, the next step, we go to vertex mode and click on this vertice. We need to punch a hole for the eyes. At the moment, we can't extrude, or well, I guess we could extrude more, but there's an easier method. We go to edit mesh and click on chamfer vertex. If I click on this one, it uh, made a super tiny hole. So let's control Z that out. We're gonna go uh, edit mesh, chamfer vertex, and click this little option box, the square, and then set this, which is a really small number, 0 0.025. Delete that out and press a uh, apply for 0.25 and you can see the eye gets a little bigger so that's good enough. I'm going to select the eye and this will actually be the eye whereas this is the eye socket area. So spacebar jump back to here and we'll scale this and move it so that it actually matches his eyes now. Uh, we're not going to um, worry too much about all the uh, placements because uh, we're going to add some more lines to cut that easier because right now it's just a four-sided uh, diamond which isn't going to match very well. All right, so we have the, um, the eye cut in place here. Let's pull this, uh, let's switch back to world mode, which is again holding W and holding left mouse button to switch your modes. And pull these inwards. And I'm just gonna leave that one there. And let's delete out the center of the eye now. So right click, go to um, face mode, click the face, and delete out the eye. So now we have a hole for the eyes. So we have the facial structure starting to get started pretty well. Um, the next step is they're adding a lot more edge loops in there to refine it. So I'm going to click on the uh, um, interactive split tool right here. And I'm going to cut from the middle down to, let's say, uh, about right there, over to, I guess, this line right there. 
press enter and that'll cut for the nose area we'll start with. Um, also, you can see that there's an extra line right here. Um, it's kind of split, it's super tiny, but there's uh, extra lines, probably because I have an overlap with the vertices, whereas the vertices is uh, overlapping there. So since I don't want the overlap, I'm gonna hold control, I mean hold X and click these back into place. So it looks like this might be a little bit off also, yep. And this one, so somehow these got a little changed probably when I moved. And I wanna make sure these are all back on the origin point. All right, so that fixes up that. Let's go back to here to, I guess object mode's fine. We're gonna cut some more uh, lines. I'm gonna cut another line from, let's say here, try it again here to here, press enter, uh, G to repeat. I'm gonna cut from here, okay, try it again, here to here, enter. And so that cuts a little more um, area in here. Uh, the next part we wanna go up to here, but I'm not gonna cut right to here. I'm gonna cut a little bit uh, differently. So I'm gonna cut from here up to here, and then up to here. And I'm gonna follow this line upwards, probably to about here, I guess. And then do one more, G repeats the last command and click it, let's say here, across to the head here. Uh, by doing this, we're adding an extra line up here and we're cutting it back across here so we don't have to keep going around and using up polygons that we don't need. Let's go to vertex mode, grab this one and slide it inwards and up a little more to round it. All right, so that um, centers, as you can see the line comes up and then splits, so we still have four here, four and four, everything's still up four sided polygon. Uh, so we have this uh, there, and I, again, I can spend numerous hours grabbing each one of these things and kind of centering it and pushing and pulling to make sure it's a little more accurate, but I'm not going to spend the time on this uh, tutorial. Um, so we have these uh, set up. Um, the next thing is we want to put another line. You can see there's a big gap right here in his head. It's not very square shaped, so I need another line going here. Uh, there's a really easy tool called... Um, insert edge loop, I click on this one and click and drag, and you can see as I'm clicking and dragging with the left mouse button and not letting go, it gives me uh, different options of where I want it to go. And so if I click right in the middle, it drops a line in there, and what it does is it, it splits all these squares. So all the way to here, and since the last square right here is to a hole, it just stops, stops automatically. Uh, so we're gonna leave that right there, and then we're gonna go back to the regular cutting tool, and I'm gonna cut, uh, another line from, I guess, here, down to here, uh, and let's keep going a little further, over to here, to here, and then down to the mouth area, that's fine. And again, Maya has issues, it doesn't always work, uh, so let's try it again, I'll cut from here to here, back up to there, and it still doesn't work. All right, let's find another direction from here, to here, still doesn't like that. Um, hmm, it's really annoying when this happens. All right, try this again. We'll go from here to here. Doesn't like that either. Um, let's control Z a bunch of times to get rid of that last line and let's try it again. Uh, let's go from the bottom of the lip back up the other direction and I'll stop right there and then try and repeat it from here to here. And that works. And repeat it from here to here. And that doesn't work. Uh, so hopefully if you're using 2015, they have this problem worked out uh, where it should cut, but it doesn't always work. Um, this one should at least go here because that's where I want it to go and it still doesn't work. Um, let's check vertex mode. So nothing looks out of place. Everything looks like it's working, but for some reason it just doesn't always cut. Let's try this again. I'm going to go from here to here. And well, we got another line. Let's try it again. From here to here. Still doesn't work. From here to here. Nope. All right, and I doubt uh, edit mesh insert edge loop will work. Well, it cuts one more line in there. That's cool. Uh, so let's go back to edge mode. Uh, and I want to get rid of this one, control clicking will be selected. 
and then hold control or hold shift, right click and delete the edge because I want to get rid of that one. And then go back to here, vertex, hold shift, right click, merge vertices, merge vertex tool and pop this back to there. So that clicks on there and then go back to edge mode, grab this edge and press delete and it wipes that out. So now I just have one more line to connect and I'll get what I originally wanted. Uh, click to there to there and it still didn't work. Try it again. Oh, from here to here. Uh, close enough. We'll take this vertex and then we'll hold shift, go to the bird, um, merge vertex tool, click and drag it up to there. All right, we got that line. So now we can go back to um, move command, edge mode, click this edge, hold shift, grab this edge, hold shift, grab this edge. Uh, I think it was those edges. Um, yep, that'll work. And then hold shift and delete edge. Okay, not yet. Uh, we'll go take vertex, we'll take this one and merge vertex tool, shift it over to there, and then go back to the edge, get rid of this one, and this one, hold shift and delete edge. Okay, we'll do one at a time. Delete edge. Del hmm. Just in case there's more vertices up there, select everything, hold shift, merge vertices to center, just in case there's a problem, repeat, merge to center, and let's try this again, delete this edge. Wow, this is really frustrating. <laughs> merge vertices to center, all right, let's grab this edge and delete it again. Hmm. All right, one more option. Delete that out, take this whole face, delete this face, uh, grab, oops, not that, uh, grab this edge, and then click the extrude button with that one edge selected, and pull it straight down. All right, and then go to vertex mode. We'll take this vertice, and now that we've made a whole new one, actually, we'll do this one. Um, Merge vertex tool, click it to there, so that creates that one, and then we'll do one more. Uh, actually, no, let's not merge that one. Uh, we want to make another shape there, so we're going to go edge mode, extrude out this edge, so there's a bit of an overlap there, which is fine. Go back to vertex mode, click this. Merge vertice tool, pop this one back into place, put this one here. So now we have the one line uh, that I'm looking for. And then we just have to connect this one downwards. So this one, uh, merge vertex tool from here to here, this one from here to here. And we just have to connect that one more edge edge mode, uh, extrude this one edge, pull it out, vertex mode, merge vertex tool to there, and grab the last one, this one, to there. All right, then go edge, grab this one, and delete that edge. All right, so all that work just to get that. I really hope they fix that button in my 2015. Uh, all right, so we'll go here, and now we can start modifying this shape. Um, I'll grab this uh, shape and start pulling it in um, in the front view. Kind of create the eye shape however we want the eyes to look. And that's probably accurate enough. Um, maybe pull that in a little more. All right, so we have the eye shape uh, there. So it took an enormous amount of work to fix that one little line. Um, but continuing, moving on. Um, so we have the uh, this line cut down for the nose. So let's pull the nose out now that we have uh, that. So let's put the nose there and probably pull this point out a little more. Um, all right, so that'll work for the nose. So the next uh, part, let's pull this 
line out a little more so we have a little more space for the rest of the nose. Maybe not that last one, we'll leave that in there. Uh, let's pull it down that way. All right, so we're gonna cut another line. Hopefully this tool works better this time. Uh, we're gonna cut from, I guess, let's go from this one to here, to here, and cut across the nose. We have a, a line that cuts across here like this. Enter G to repeat. We're gonna click here to here. Let's make sure that works. All right, that works. We're gonna repeat again to about there, and that works. All right, so hopefully it'll keep working the rest of the way around. Uh, so let's click here. Ah, close. Uh, let's go back to this edge and delete the edge. Let's try this again. I wanna go from here to here, and then one last time from here to here. All right. Uh, Hopefully you guys don't have problems with that tool. It is very frustrating. All right, so we click this one, pull this up to create the nose a little better. Uh, and you can start modifying this to create a better shape for the how the nose polygons or vertices are working. Uh, the next step we have, um, this one's a five-sided one. So if I pull this over, you can probably notice a little better. Uh, center that one a little more. There's one, two, three, four, five. So we have to fix that last one. So let's cut from here to here, to there, um, close, from here to there, all right, and then we'll put one more down here, uh, even though there's two above it, we'll just put one down here, and I'll cut this one all the way to the back, all right, so at this point, we're going to need a lot of work to rearrange the uh, topology, which we want to do now before we add any more lines, so vertex tool, uh, hold the W and jump to normal average and start rearranging these things. So I'm going to slide this over here a little more. Um, and this one should probably, oops, vertex mode. This one should slide upwards. Uh, the nose can probably move down a little more. These can probably move up a little more. Um, and you want to more or less try and round everything as best as possible to make them look more more fluid I guess and again you want to also adjust your lips area so let's say we'll take um, this whole section uh, do world mode and push these in a little more uh, the bottom of the lips should probably pull out a little more top of the lips should probably pull out a little more uh, and you can start to see we're getting the shape of the uh, the lips these might need to go in some and I'm not going to spend that many hours on the demo but you get the idea of uh, adjusting this to create the right uh, curvature. So the next step is to uh, add some more edge loops for the mouth. So we're going to go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool, click, uh, and for some reason it's not going all the way around. So let's Control Z that and find what the problem is. Vertex mode. Uh, there's an extra vertice sitting right there. Uh, so I'm going to hold Shift and go to Delete Vertex. Shift, right click, Delete Vertex. All right, we're not gonna delete that one, we're gonna go merge that one. So merge vertices, merge vertex tool, move that one to there. All right, any other vertices that got out of place? Nope, looks pretty fine. Um, so now that we've gotten rid of the one, now the uh, insert edge loop tool should work. So we'll drop this in here and you can see it works perfectly now because it's connecting all of the uh, squares. I'm gonna go move this out a little more to define the lips a little better. Uh, and then I should probably put, um, I guess, well, let me undo that. Edit mesh, insert edge loop and slide it up a little bit higher and then pull that out. All right, so that kind of refines the lips a little more and we'll do one more. Edit mesh, insert edge loop tool and drop it right about there and pull that out a little more. And then lastly, we'll go to vertex mode, grab all the ones here, make sure I don't have anything grabbed in the back of the head, uh, squish that down so the mouth's a little more closed, and we have this. We'll go to object mode, and you can see his mouth is probably a bit too wide. So back to vertices, grab, I guess I don't need to grab all of these, grab just these right here, and let's scale these in and move them inwards until they're close enough 
and check again. All right, let's go to vertex mode, and we're gonna need to pull some of these backwards. And it's a very tedious process to go through and modify all these. So the mouth is starting to look a little better. Um, let's fix up these vertices here that aren't aligned. So hold X, snap them. All right, that should be about right. If you press um, three on the keyboard, it smooths your model. So it's just a temporary preview of what you're seeing. It's not the end result. So one and three will switch between uh, your rough polygons. Three is your smooth polygons. Uh, so I'll put this back on one so I can see what I'm looking at. Go to these vertices. And again, keep sliding these until you center it a little better. Uh, and I'm not gonna spend enormous amounts of time on here. It's just basically pulling each one of these vertice for vertice until you start to get the lip shape that you're looking for. Uh, it's getting there, it's gonna take a lot more work, a lot more time, good enough for now. Uh, let's keep moving on with the demo. Uh, so once we have that in there, uh, we wanna go for the eyes now. So I'm gonna go to the edge mode, double click here, should select the whole border. I'm gonna go to extrude and then click the blue line and pull it and that should pull um, or not. Uh, we're gonna go click the box first and then click this box and drag and it should scale inwards. All right, so that scales a little more and then we're gonna do one more. Uh, G to repeat the last command, extrude and then pull it backwards. All right, so we have a little bit of a eye shape right there. Uh, next up, we need to go put an eye in there. So zoom out a little more. Uh, let's go to sphere. Draw a sphere on the grid, about that big, and move it into place. I can also just hold the V on the keyboard, and it should V snap into place, uh, or not. Let's just move it manually. I guess it only works if you select uh, the vertice. All right, so we'll take this and we'll rotate it. We'll rotate on the X, and I'm gonna specify it to 90 exactly. So we have this in place, um, and then I can center it a little better. Uh, the eye is usually bigger than you would think it is, um, but that's too big. So I'm gonna scale that down some, move it forward, and that's getting a little better. Uh, scale it some more, and then move it forward. If you make the eye too small, it might start sitting too far out of the face, uh, but that should work. Uh, let's check in front view, and you can see that the eye is pretty much centered where it should be, right about there. And by rotating it, get all these uh, edge loops in the correct direction with one point in the middle, it might make it easier for texturing, which we'll see when we get to. Uh, so that more or less centers the eye pretty well. Let's click back on the face and go to vertex mode. And now we can start pulling these vertices around. So let's take this. I'm gonna pull this forwards a little more. Uh, take these over here, pull these forward, uh, and try and keep the eye behind the face. So if I'm not gonna pull it forward, let's pull it away some. Uh, so this way we don't get a gap anywhere. And that's probably good enough. Anything that looks like there might be a gap between the eye, I just grab some of these and pull these backwards until it matches. And that's probably good enough for the demo. So if I, if I press three on the keyboard, uh, it should smooth out the uh, character. And you can see that the eye fits in there pretty well. Uh, let's go press one on the keyboard back to uh, the non-preview mode. Uh, so now that we have the eye in place, let's go add some more edge loops and get ready to finish the guy up. Uh, so we'll go click on um, split edge ring or interactive split tool, which sometimes works. Uh, we'll click on the bottom one there and keep pulling upwards until we get somewhere around here. Uh, and then I'll try and move this down a little bit, so I'll pull it down, pull it forward to kind of get the shape of the nose that I want. Take these, pull this down. So it kind of keeps as much of a square as I can get. Maybe pull this one down some more. All right, so we've got a line cut in there. Uh, and that should more or less work for the nose. Um, so the next one we're gonna 
Uh, actually, we're going to use the other tool now to be faster. So let me take these. You can see here that the, uh, the pivot point is not centered on the points I selected, which means somehow I grabbed a point in the back. So it's deselect that, holding control to deselect it. Now the pivot is centered on the points I've selected, so I know that I don't have anything in the back of his head. I'm going to slide these across his face and up a little more so it fits a little better there. I'm going to take this one, pull that over there. So that kind of has a contour line coming around here. And let's go add in insert edge loop, drop one right in the middle. And that centers it right down the side of his face. Uh, again, if I had more time and I'm not going to spend it on this video, uh, we want to make sure that we kind of center these to make it look a little more uh, curved on his face. Move that around some more uh, so you get more of a, a loop. And we need one more probably going around there. Edit mesh, insert, edge loop. We could probably use another one here. Um, or just space these out a little more, which would help also. Uh, so the next up, we want to put one going from here up around his head to kind of fill in some more. We want to put one here to go around his head this way. And one more right here to kind of go around his head that way. And that puts everything in more or less... Uh, square shapes again a lot more refining to move all these different points around you can see his head is still very flat right here so we'd have to go and take all these vertices and uh, pull these out to round his head some more his head appears rather flat so it needs to be pulled up some more to round that um, and maybe pull these backwards so uh, not going to spend all that time uh, so next up we need some more rings around the eyes so edit mesh insert edge loop we're going to put at least one in here uh, we could possibly put, I guess, maybe two. I guess I'll put one for now. Let's see what that looks like. So one should work. All right. And now we're going to need to put some more uh, G for repeat the last command. I'm going to put one down here in the middle of his neck. Put one right here that goes around the front of him. Put one right here that goes around this side of him. And then go back to vertex mode. And again very meticulously moving all of these until it rounds out his head uh, from that view you can see the dent inside here so we have to pull this one out uh, you can see here that it's this one might be sticking out a little too far it goes in and I'm not going to spend all the amount of time uh, tweaking this but you get the idea so the next step is to create the ear so I'm going to pull this forward a little more Kind of center that out. I could even, if I wanted to, slide these back to center that and play with all these on the back end some more. We'll go to face mode now. We'll take all four of these and we're going to extrude. And I'm going to go click on the square so I can get the scale in the middle. Scale it down to here. And that's probably good enough. Uh, maybe a little smaller. And then I'll G to repeat the last command. And then I'll take this blue arrow and pull it outwards. And now we have the ear getting started. Um, go to vertex mode and start rearranging. So let's move this over to here. Move this here to round it. This one probably goes back to there. Uh, this one should go over here. Bring this up um, over there. Push this back in a little more. And take this one, pull it out and push this one down and back. All right, so that flattens out this. If I press three on the keyboard, you can see the ear is starting to pop out. His head definitely needs uh, more work. It's very warped and wobbly. Um, so the next up, we're gonna go face mode again, grab these four faces, extrude in inwards again. Right now, I don't have the scale, it's just to move. So click the square, it gives you the scale in the middle. I can scale it in, G to repeat. I'm gonna scale it down and then scale it in a little more. All right, put uh, three on. You can see that it's starting to create the ear shape. Uh, and I'm not gonna spend a long time in the ear. It could take, if you want a good quality ear, a couple hours. Um, I'll take both of these, I'll extrude those in, push that back, and then grab the last one and extrude this one, push it in, go to scale, make it really small, move it forwards, uh, and back some more. All right, so you have the eardrum area getting started. 
uh, I guess let me take this group right here let me extrude this pull this out um, yeah I guess that'll work and we'll go to vertex mode and start grabbing some of these vertices I'll take these pull this out and then take these and pull this this direction and depending on the ear shape there's lots of different ears out there uh, no, actually, it's mostly all the same, but uh, the slight differences between different ears. So, again, I'm not going to spend super long, but you can play around this for a while and try and get different results. Maybe uh, pull uh, some of these up, pull this one up to give a little more curvature there. Uh, when you go back to one, it's going to look really blocky, but pressing three will preview it, and this is what we're going to get in the end is the smooth result. I'm not going to smooth it now because that's too many polygons. The fewer you work with, the easier it is. If you wanted to sharpen out the ear some more so it's not just kind of like popping out the side, we can go edit mesh, insert edge loop, and pop an edge loop in around the edge. And then let's say we scale it downwards so it tightens that out. Um, and then insert another edge loop. Uh, right about there and it should sharpen that one and then I can go and grab oops, this one and scale that some more so if I scale that outwards it should scale the ear a little bit larger uh, I can take this one move it backwards maybe scale a little bigger all right and you can start to see that the um, the ear starts to take form but again I'm not going to spend that long modeling ear, just kind of look at the photograph and just kind of start adding and cutting more lines in there and keep pushing and pulling to get the uh, desired shape that you're looking for. Maybe move some of these uh, downwards and inwards and maybe up some more. Okay, close enough for now. And that pretty much uh, models the head. If you want to make another eye, just press Control D, duplicate. Uh, so D for duplicate. Control D. All right, and you get two eyes. The mouth is really needing a lot of work. The nose needs a lot of work. Um, the whole face needs a lot of work. Uh, just pushing and pulling every one of these vertices until you get the right shape you want. You can keep cutting more lines in there, but try and keep um, as, I guess, i switch out to normal mode. Uh, we can slide these around. Try and keep these as rounded as you can get so it rounds across his face. Oops, uh, move that down. Alright, so that's more or less how to get the topology on the character. Uh, once you're all done, this is me spending a lot more hours trying to get the face looking a little more accurate. Uh, but again, it's the same topology we have here. The ear has a little more detail to it, not too much more. Um, and then the very last thing, we need to start putting the... Uh, the mouth inside of them. So right now we don't have a mouth, so we're going to go extrude that back there. Uh, so I'm going to go take, let's fit that on the screen, take this half, not that, just this half, I'm going to delete it, and then go over to edge mode and grab this edge. I can double click, but it's going to grab the whole outer edge, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to drag a rectangle across to grab what I want and then hold control and drag again. That'll unselect the other pieces I don't need. All right, and so that leaves just this part selected. So now we're going to go to extrude on the edge. I'm going to pull the edge. I'm going to switch to click this little world button and it pops out to world mode. I can pull that directly back. I can scale it upwards. Um, and I guess I'll pull it all the way back. So as far back as this mouth's going to be, we'll scale it upwards as wide as this inner mouth's going to be, and call that done. Uh, so next up, we'll go back to object mode. I'm going to go to edit mesh, append to polygon tool. What this will do is it'll allow me to build a fill in the shape. So I'm going to click one edge once, and it lights it up in pink. You can kind of see these arrow markers. 
the arrows are telling you which direction you need to go. So I clicked up here, so the next step is to go down. And then you just keep filling in by clicking arrow to arrow until you get all filled in. Press enter to confirm it. And it should fill that in. If it doesn't, you can do sections at a time until it works. All right, and then the last thing is to click in these little sections. So I'm gonna go from here to here. Enter, G to repeat. And it looks like I have uh, a few extra lines that could use some adjusting, so rearranging and uh, spending the time to move these around. Let's move this one up higher, move that one up higher. Close enough. I'll cut that to there. And that should do it. So that one's a four-sided one right here. Vertex mode. Yep, four-sided right there. All right, and then I can push and pull these if I wanted to uh, make the mouth a little more round on the back. So I'll push that backwards, push these backwards, spend some more time that I'm not going to worry about right now. And you get this. Uh, once that's all kind of nice and rounded out, uh, the last step is to put a tongue in there. Actually, we need to put... Uh, insert edge loop so that one didn't go all the way around which means there's an issue somewhere aha this one has five sides so vertex merge vertices send this one to here all right try this again edit mesh insert edge loop tool Pop a line right there and right there, call that good. We can scale these up and down, kind of widen the mouth. Take this one as well, scale it up and down. And that rounds out the inside of the mouth some more. Um, okay, so now let's put the tongue in here. And the reason I put the, uh, I did this part last is because when I'm moving the vertices on the mouth, I don't want to accidentally grab this and rearrange all of that. So it's better if I do the mouth first and then do this at the very, very end. So let's go grab a square. Let's draw, drag the square on the ground plane, then move this guy into place. All right, we can see it's too big. So scale them. Let's grid snap them, so hold X, pops them right to the middle of the grid. I can scale them some more wide. That's probably wide enough for the tongue. Let's go to vertex mode, uh, insert edge loop. I'll put one right here, I'll put one right there. Um, or alternatively, instead of doing that, I can just click on polycube, set all these to like two in the subdivision count or even three. Uh, I'll just add some more right here. Go vertex mode. These will get uh, larger, less larger. This will get a little more narrower going inwards. And that should be more narrower. And again, you can spend more time with that. Uh, all of this should move down. These should probably move down some more. And you can start to get the tongue shape and you press 3 on the keyboard you'll see the end result is in the end. So we have the tongue more or less in shape uh, and you can spend a lot longer on that if you wanted to. So object mode and at this point we're pretty much done building the head. Uh, also you notice all the, um, the hard edges right here. When you press 3 they go away but while you're in this mode you can still see all those hard edges. That's a uh, Something you has a benefit, but not at the moment. So I'm going to take this and go to normals and go soften edge while you're selected on the object. And it softens all the edges. So when I click off it, now you don't see those hard edges. So I put it in three, it doesn't make a difference. But one, 
you don't see the hard edges anymore. That happens when you extrude and, and cut lines in there. Um, I'll put that on three as well. All right, so that pretty much uh, finishes up how to model the head. If I were to go and duplicate this again for temporary purposes, duplicate special, put the head over there. I can duplicate the other eye again. And we have the head sculpted and modeled. Uh, again, a lot more time can be spent adjusting the polygons, but at least you have the correct curvature and way of modeling, uh, which is all these steps we just walked through. All right, so the next tutorial, um, actually, no, we need to cover hair real quick. Uh, all right, so in order to cover hair, let me explain the process first, and then I'll actually go through and model it on the character. Um, all right, so there's a couple different methods for hair, let's say. Uh, let's say if you're sculpting it, then you would just have like a permanent, like a statue, like a hair permanently there. Um, that's one option. Uh, option two, let's say you're putting this in an animated movie and you're staying inside of Maya, then Maya has its own hair that you can add to it and it'll have it all blowing and all that stuff. So it's more realistic instead of a statue kind of sculpted hair. Um, option three, if you're sending it to a game engine instead of like, let's say, movie, movie in Maya, uh, what you can do with the game engine, you can make like uh, polygon squares and just put like a whole bunch of them, like hundreds of little polygon squares and texture them with hair fibers and using transparency and opacity, when you put that in the game engine, you would get all the results of hair fibers um, rather than a blocky clump of hair. But since I'm going to go with the concept art of having a more anime style where it's more like clumpy and all that, um, I'm going to sculpt it with uh, the hair out of polygons. Uh, but you can do whatever method you, you'd like to go with, but I'm going to cover how to do this method. Um, so the hair here is basically just taking his whole head and um, pulling the polygons forward to create the hair fibers. Uh, if I take it up, uh, you see it, it's a separate piece. You can model it right onto his head if you wanted to. But um, I uh, duplicated his head and just pulled the pieces off. So once I duplicated, I deleted the whole face part and just left the head and pulled the, the hair pieces forward. However, when I put uh, three on the keyboard, it smooths out the result and gives us a preview of what it would look like when it finally is smooth. And I click off it. You can see here that it kind of looks a little more like a mop, just kind of like laid on his head and not very detailed, kind of um, very basic and simple. Uh, so by the end result, I have something that looks a little more uh, realistic and the difference is that the hair fibers are a lot more sharper uh, you can see that there's a sharp edges and lines in here and that's by adding edge loops which I'll explain um, but uh, it looks a lot more realistic whereas here it's kind of I guess basic simple kind of like uh, I guess amateur in a way it's not it looks very uh, not as detailed as it could look um, so in order to, to fix that problem it looks pretty decent here but pressing three smooths it and we want to fix the smoothing problem. But before I uh, explain how I fixed all that, um, I also went through and added some more details here so you can see the hair wasn't quite finished in the first step. So in the second step, I put like the calic on the top of his head and pulled some more hair fibers down there. So I got that result in the end to finish that up. So the next step, uh, zoom into here, uh, we want to smooth out the hair to reduce that um, uh, floppiness I guess and you can see here that it has a lot more of a sharp edge loop to it uh, or line to it whereas this guy over here has kind of just a clump where it's just like sitting on there here he's got this sharp um, line and what's causing that is this double edge coming right down here this is called an edge loop where I'm putting two edges right next to each other uh, this one if I pull up this one um, this one doesn't even have let's pull both at once uh, I had an extra line down the middle, so you can see here it's missing that line, but eventually when you take an edge uh, and you put two lines next to each other, that'll create that sharpness, so the sharpness creates that hard edge. Uh, so that's the concept of doing edge loops. So I added a couple here, and you can see that uh, it has, um, uh, these are looking pretty decent, it's looking pretty decent right here, it's nice and uh, sharp. Uh, this still needs a lot more work on this side, so I'm jumping over here. This one has a lot more edge loops, kind of going all the way around all the fibers. So every edge and corner that I wanted to sharpen up, um, I have edge loops coming down here. And that can take a little bit of a while to bring all these edge loops into place. Uh, but when you smooth it, um, you get a nice, sharp, more clumpy, anime-style kind of looking hair. Uh, 
And so again, that's just taking the basic polygon shapes and refining it with all these tiny, tiny little uh, loops and everywhere that I want to have a sharp crease and corner. All right, and then I also went through and detailed the ear a little bit more, which is uh, this one right here. So I spent a little more time on this ear, um, not as quick as I did on the uh, original demo right there, um, but uh, overall it turned out pretty decent for what we're doing. Um, and I also refined his facial expressions uh, by putting another edge loop kind of um, up in the eyebrow area that sharpened his facial, facial expressions and made it more of a stern uh, focused look. Um, we're going to do blend shapes later for the rigging aspect and that will create different like happy and sad and face and mouth moving. Uh, so we'll do all that. Um, Alright, so going back to here to create the hair. Uh, and again, this uh, face needs a lot more um, work to make it cleaner, like the whole topology is bumpy. Um, all this part needs to be like pulled out a little bit more and this part could be pulled out a little bit more to uh, kind of clean this up a little more but uh, we're not going to do the head right now we're just going to do the, uh, the hair but it looks a little better it still needs a lot more work uh, even when it's smooth it still needs work uh, all right so we take the head here and I'm going to duplicate it control D for duplicate and pull it upwards and you can see here by pulling it upwards, I have a second head. I'm gonna to go to face mode and I'm gonna delete off everything that is not hair. So the neck is not hair, the face is not hair and just keep deleting out all this stuff. Um, and we're, the ear is not going to be hair, but I do wanna keep these. So control uh, select will unselect it, shift select will select things. Um, and I guess it depends if I want to have his his hair coming around his ear. Probably don't need to. I'll probably take those out. And I'm left with this uh, basic shape. Um, that's if he has sideburns. If he doesn't have sideburns, I could probably take out uh, this section as well. Uh, so all said and done, I take this piece now. Um, and I want to... Uh, uh, educational version, student version. Um, all right, so put that up there and that kind of uh, rounds out that some more. All right, so we have this and before I go uh, sculpting, this is only one half of his head, so I'm gonna duplicate that. Uh, so edit, uh, duplicate, um, I'm gonna duplicate special so I can flip it. So pull up that and I don't wanna use an instance, I wanna use a copy this time. Instance will make, if I change one side, it affects the other. So I'm just gonna do a copy and the negative one. Um, actually, I don't even need to do that, close that. Uh, we're gonna do mirror geometry this time. So click mirror geometry settings. This should be negative x section. We're going to merge. Uh, press apply and it merges the other side or it mirrors the other side. But as you can see uh, when we mirrored it some of the polygons weren't quite accurate. This one was moved a little too far forward so the whole geometry got a little messed up. Uh, to fix that we're going to go vertex um, and I can select uh, this one and I can merge them all back together, or I could fix the one point and redo the geometry again. Um, but I guess this will work. Hold shift, nah. Yeah, if I wanted to hold shift, uh, merge vertices, right click and merge vertices center, it'll merge them all and I can go one by one down the line. Uh, we'll do, I'll just fix the vertices real quick. I'll go to vertex mode, grab it, uh, move with the W key, hold X and drag it until it pops into place. And X again, and it grid snaps it back on there. Fixing those two points should uh, work. So we'll go to mesh, mirror geometry, and it should almost perfectly, it's still this one. So let's go into vertex mode, hold shift, hold right click, merge vertices, merge vertices to center, and that merges it together. All right, and I can take this one vertice and pull it up, I guess. All right, so there is his hair section. Um, you can rearrange the topology however you want. It doesn't need to match the same as the head. Uh, just close enough so I can move this wherever I want to. I can make a whole extra line down here if I need to. Uh, so go to object mode, take the hair now, push it down, and it should perfectly match his head now because it was a, originally a copy of his head. Uh, so that's where his hairline is going to be. Um, and it should more or less match. I could probably, if I want to, pull this back a little more and pull it out and keep kind of match it. But yeah, 
it all depends on what hairstyle you're aiming for. All right, so we take this and let's say I wanna have his hair kind of pull outwards to the side. I'm gonna grab um, face mode, not of this object. Pull this a little higher, oops, it already is face mode. All right, take this one, take this one. We can't really see it because it's kind of sunk in his head. Uh, so we take these two. Um, I could just probably get away with just doing one of these. I think I'll take these two instead. So I'll take these two and let's go with, um, actually, I forgot one more thing, they're not actually merged. So we need to go to uh, vertex mode, object mode, pull this a little higher off his head, vertex mode. Uh, when we did the geometry, we didn't actually merge the two, so we have to manually go through merge vertices to center. Um, but a shortcut, you can just grab, if I press four on the keyboard, I can look through in wireframe mode, grab all these, and I have more than I need. Uh, but if you go to edit mesh, merge vertex, uh, merge, just regular merge with the option box, and you can set your threshold. If it's small enough, it'll still merge them, but it won't merge the other pieces. So if I press apply at 0.01, it should have merged all the rest of these, but not moved any. So if I click once and try and move, you can see that it only moves the one. Um, whereas before, clicking once and moving would have um, separated the two meshes. So that looks like it's working. So I'll put this pressing five on the keyboard, puts it out of wireframe back into shaded mode. Four, we'll put it in wireframe. Uh, so now we can go back to face mode and let's say I'll take these two faces and extrude, click the extrude button and I can pull it forwards a little bit if I want to. And then I can go sideways, round it, and then move it. All right, so that should work and let's scale it in a little bit close. I'm not gonna spend forever on the hair. I think you guys can probably get the general concept of what's happening. Uh, but it does take a lot of vertice for vertice, pushing and pulling to create the desired shape. I'll take these, I'll take all these and slide them down this direction so it starts coming across his head. Um, that should work. Let's rotate that into position a little better. So it's starting to come forwards, wrong direction. All right, so his hair is coming out that direction and I can probably pull it back a little more and then re-extrude. So go back to face mode, take these, extrude again, and pull straight forwards. Uh, we're gonna go scale it with R button, scale it down smaller, and this will be his first clump of hair. Pull it down a little further and move it off to the side a little more. And he's got uh, one hair fiber. I guess I could probably pull down a lot further and go to vertex mode again. Uh, make sure I don't have anything else back there clicked. And let's put another edge loop in there. Insert edge loop, put the edge loop here. Let's scale the edge loop a little bigger to clump out his hair and move it up a little bit more. All right, so that kind of pulls out the first uh, strand of hair. Um, and if I want to pull his hair a little bit closer down his forehead, I can go do that also. Just uh, pull up vertex mode, grab some of these front vertices, make sure I don't have any other ones picked, and just kind of pull that down his hair, hairline a little more. I could probably add, insert another edge loop here to help as well, because it looks like it's popping up a little high. If I pull that down, uh, yeah, I could use another edge loop. Insert edge loop, pop that right there. Looks like it's gonna run all the way through his hair. Uh, that's fine enough, I can leave that. Um, so more or less it's uh, getting started. Uh, so we'll repeat this process one more time. I'll grab uh, these four for the next hair area. Actually, let me pull that vertice back a little bit. All right, take these four, extrude again, pull it out. Uh, let's rotate. And then move. Scale. And this is a, I'm trying to rough out the basic shape real quick. This could take a while. Uh, scale this direction. Scale that way. 
and vertex. I think I spent maybe four hours working on the hair, uh, just pulling it into the right shape, vertice for a vertice. So I'm not going to spend that long in this uh, tutorial. Pull that back out there. Okay. Take these four faces now, extrude again. Pull it out and down, rotate the extrusion. Scale it. Pull it back some more. And let's do one more extrusion. Pull it straight out and scale it really small. And then let's take all these vertices and pull them down some more. All right, and we start to have the hair shape uh, taking uh, shape. And again, it'll take a long time to do all this, so I'm not going to do all the hair shape. Uh, a lot of this stuff, the hair can be pulled down a little further. Let's grab that one. Maybe even grab the whole top. Pull that down further. All right, so that looks a little better. Um, keep pulling those out. If I put this in three mode now, go back to object mode, you can see his hair is starting to form. Keep pulling out more pieces, keep popping out some more pieces there, and then grab the next side, pull out some more here. I don't have to use two, I could just use one if I wanted to, or I can get two, uh, pull these out, put that back in one mode, uh, scale, rotate, move and extrude one last time scale it really small move it down into place okay object mode all right so it's getting there uh, but that's what we have for the hair so far and then the last step is to put the edge loops in there once you're happy with your shape let's uh, say i want to have a a sharp upper line. So I grab this and this, pull this up to create that pointed area, and maybe one more. And then I can take uh, edge mode, this one, this one, and this one, and maybe that one as well. And then go to edit mesh bevel, pull up the options, and I'm using 0.25, which is going to be pretty small. Um, I'll probably 0 0.025 and see what I get. Apply that, and it looks like it's pretty decent size. So now if I put three back on the keyboard, go to object mode, you can see it's sharper in the hair fiber out. So whereas before uh, it was a lot more rounded, now it's a lot sharper. And I keep repeating the process. Let's say I go to edge mode and I want to use this one to sharpen. So apply that one. Uh, this one I want to sharpen, apply. Uh, These hair fibers could probably be pulled out a bit more. All right. Looks like I grabbed something down there. All right, let's grab that edge. I'll sharpen that one. I'll take these, move them up, sharpen those. Now let's see what we have now, object mode. All right, so you can see it's sharpening his hair. It's making it a little more realistic. Um, I guess I could probably sharpen this line as well. This one, this one, this one, apply. All right, and then spending a lot more time, you can start to get a pretty nice uh, set of hair coming down here. When you have a lot of these edge loops in here, it'll take a little bit of time to unwrap the UVs, which we'll eventually get to, but We'll call that good enough. Um, and that's what we have here for the uh, how to sculpt the hair. I'm not going to spend the rest of the video going through that because that would just take a long time. Um, but you guys get the general idea of pulling the hair out until basically I got this result. I pulled enough of the chunks out, just staying low poly for a while, just um, pulling out the major shapes, pulling out here, pulling out those, pulling out that one. And then I got to the next head and kept going, pulling out some more 
just basically grab a set of polygons, extrude them and scale them down, grab them, extrude them and scale them down, and then start going through and edge looping everything so that you have a nice sharp hair. And that more or less should cover how to get through the hair and the rest of the head, so um, hopefully that helps you guys out, puts you in a good direction. Uh, next step, we're going to start uh, sculpting the body. And once the body is all sculpted, then we're going to start putting the clothes on them. Alright, and that should be about it for this 